Imagine a line of well-being. You have ups and downs and that's normal. Before colonisation, Aboriginal people also had their ups and downs. But overall, our spirit was strong. Aboriginal people had a strong culture for tens of thousands of years. When the dominant culture arrived and they took over our land without our permission, the process of dispossession began. The loss of land and disruption to our way of life, ignoring the things most sacred to our culture, including our family kinship systems, language, traditional law, cultural practices and looking after country. The dispossession brought massacres, poisoning and disease. We lost our freedom, physical safety and health, all of which impacted on our well-being. They introduced legislation and policies to assimilate us, with the ultimate aim to breed Aboriginal people out of existence. They even took our children from us. We lost the right to move freely in our own country and to see our family. We did not have access to legal systems. We were not allowed to get an equal education or receive equal health care. They took half our earnings and we had to get permission to marry. Our basic human rights were denied. All of this pain and loss can break your spirit. No matter where you are in the world, no matter what colour your skin is or how civilised you think you are, if people no longer have those basic human rights, their well-being will plummet. And this is exactly what happened to us as Aboriginal people. The well-being of whole families and communities through generation after generation suffered. Despite all of this, Aboriginal people endured, and through the resilience of our spirit, we survived. Slowly, policies and practices began to change, and the journey of our recovery begins. But it's not an easy thing to overcome, and many of our people are still living in a place of despair and hurt. When you are oppressed on such a large scale, and for so long, a lot of despair builds up. Eventually, you start to normalise that. This is how it is for our people. The oppression has become internalised. When people go through trauma, they often rely on their family and friends to be the strong rocks that support them and help them to recover. But what happens when everyone around you is also going through the same trauma? Those rocks that you try to hold on to to pull yourself up are also crumbling. And like all human beings, what we don't heal in our own lives, we sometimes pass on to our children. When there is internalised oppression and low well-being for generation after generation, along with a society that views you with negative stereotypes, racism and prejudices, it may lead to family violence, alcohol and drug use, incarceration, illness, mental health issues, and low emotional and social well-being, even suicide. Children who are born into this environment might not always have the same opportunities and may start to view the world as harsh and cold instead of feeling love, warmth and security. This is called intergenerational trauma. Now, don't get me wrong, our people are strong and resilient and there are plenty of us living happy and healthy lives with strong connection to our families, community and culture. But many of us have family and friends who are struggling, and when we try to help pull them out, it can be very easy for us to get pulled back in. Let's think about the economy for a moment. The white man comes to our country, and with them they bring a whole new social and economic system. Our people were stopped from doing things our way, even though it had been working well for us for a long time. Yet we were also locked out of the new systems. This systematic exclusion from the economy and social systems throughout multiple generations has led to the many disparities in the social determinants of well-being that our people are challenged with today. Over time, there have been other cultures that have migrated to Australia who have also been subjected to discriminatory legislation like the White Australia policy. They too have experienced racism and discrimination. 
However, unlike our people, they were allowed to stay together, keep their children, maintain their cultural ways and participate in the economy. Whereas our mob has only been allowed to participate in the last 40 to 50 years. As we can see, it's a big and complex challenge that we are facing. Even after the policies of colonisation ended, the trauma of these policies and practices still echo down the generations. I'm not talking about ancient history either. Some people say, it happened 200 years ago, get over it. Sure, the oppression may have started 200 years ago, but it has only started to change recently, less than 50 years ago. The last of the 1905 Act was only repealed in 1964 and the Native Welfare Act in 1972. So when were your parents born? When were you born? Many people living today are survivors of those oppressive legislations. The struggle to heal communities and achieve self-determination and equity takes time. The impacts of past policies are still felt today. And now we live in a contemporary society, but there are new policies and legislation that still impact negatively on Aboriginal people. We also need to change society's negative stereotypes and attitudes towards Aboriginal people. Participating in modern Australia shouldn't mean that we have to forget our culture. In fact, quite the opposite. We know that strengthening, reclaiming and reviving our culture and language builds our resilience and is healing for our people. Many of our mob are healing and living strong and healthy lives with a strong connection to our culture. We can still go hunting. We just might use a four-wheel drive to get there and be using the latest fishing rod instead of a spear. We can still have a strong spiritual connection to our country and the land. We can still speak our language, sing and dance, have ceremonies, paint our pictures and pass our stories to our young ones. We can still respect our elders, share tucker with our family and loved ones and care for our kin. We can maintain our cultural and social obligations to family, community and country and be respected as the first people of this nation. We can live and thrive in modern Australia as equals that's what Aboriginal well-being is. So how long does it take for people to recover from this trauma and the lasting effects of colonisation and dispossession? Well, we actually do have some idea. Because unfortunately, people have been oppressing each other and inflicting trauma on each other's cultures all around the world for centuries. The evidence tells us that the impacts of trauma on the individual may be felt for many generations after the initial trauma. So if we know that on an individual level the trauma impacts on future generations, what are the effects of the trauma inflicted on a whole race of people for multiple generations? We can assume that it might take a lot longer to recover. But our people's spirit is strong and we are recovering. However, it is important to remember that right now in Australia, we are smack in the middle of a transition phase. We know that recovering from colonisation and dispossession is a process that takes time. But through engagement, partnerships and systemic change to attitudes and policies, we can speed this process up. What does this mean? It means recognition of Aboriginal people as the first people of this nation, engagement and partnerships to support Aboriginal-led community-controlled initiatives, building sustainability through increased education and workforce opportunities, addressing the social disparities and providing equitable access to services, ensuring that there is a broader understanding of Aboriginal culture and history in schools, universities and workplaces providing culturally safe services that challenge racism, systemic bias and stereotypes, recognition and support for cultural strengths that contribute to well-being, helping to maintain, reclaim and revive Aboriginal culture and language, 
strengthen Aboriginal people's basic human right of self-determination and equity. And sharing the vision of all Aboriginal people living long, well and healthy lives. Thank you.